Chatting world, happy Friday, uh, July 1st, welcome to another episode of Cognac Confessionals, I'm your host Deshaun, here at Where Media Meets, in conjunction with VJ TV, Feral Films, History and the Making Entertainment, Keep It Cloudy Productions, it's uh, like I said, first Friday, you know, it's a beautiful day. It's been a very, very interesting week as always. A lot of shit going on in the news and, uh, you know, everything. Got my extreme co host with me, my good brother. Hey, what it do, y'all? Feral, Feral Films. We have a guest tonight that will be coming in shortly. You know, we're chilling. It's good. It's been a it's been a real interesting week, bro. I mean, you got just you. the extremes in the news has just been preposterous, man. Really? Right. Yeah. You know, your boy. Where you want to start off at? I I, I let you start. Where, where, where you where you want to start with? Uh, man, the one thing that everybody's kind of um well let let's start with the most heaviest thing first. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of y'all know, you know, the classic thing, you know, about Emmett Till and how justice yes. wasn't served. Right. Well, there's still an opportunity for justice to be served because the person who was the catalyst is not only still alive, yes. they actually have had a warrant for nearly 60 years right. that was never executed. And if somebody says it's a long time and she's old in Germany... Yeah. They literally just indicted a guy who was... And he was 100, 101. Yeah, who was exactly. a Nazi. So, they don't let nothing go. Ain't no, ain't no statute of limitations on murder. Right. You know? That's right. So, I mean, and the thing about it, you know, because I've read something on it, you know, a little bit about it, and I've... Mm-hmm. And for... Actually, even before this discovery, you know, we've been, you know, the, yeah. the melanated community, we've been asking, like, look, it's already known yeah. it was a lie. Prosecute the bitch. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not even going to lie. Up until a few years ago, I just assumed that everybody involved was dead. Yeah. And then I found out that, oh, now, that she still, was still living and in the same community. She's in her 80s. And I was like, whoa, nobody yeah. went and knocked her head off? Bill Cosby can go to jail hella old. She can go to jail yeah. hella old. Because her and Bill Cosby are the same age, right? And Bill Cosby like 83, something like that. Exactly. So now. And he's in jail. In fact, I just seen him. He was in court about something where he just lost another little court case. Well, mm-hmm. somebody said something happened in 1975. Oh, see, they, well, you that's, know, that's just like with the, the that's 47 years ago. That's like with the Deshaun Watson thing. You know, they popping up with all these extra allegations. Man, I wish my, my mom Bell was still around. I don't know, have her make an accusation. Let's cash in too. Yeah, but yeah, really. Hello, it was good. Really though, man, I'm really hoping that this lady get to spend her twilight years sitting up in somebody's penitentiary. And what really? I would also like is if she owned property or things of that neighbor, oh, nature, civil then whatever. Suit. Civil suit, yes. Heirs are still alive of his. I want them to take. I want them to take yeah. everything that he she has. He has family members that are still alive, and yeah. they're they're pushing for their, yeah. them to arrest her. And, and it's rightfully so. Yeah, and I would love for them to make sure that she dies in, in shame, in jail, and broke. And broke. I'm with you 100, percent my brother. Let's cheers to that shit. Yes, sir. Put it in the universe. Yes, sir. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> to her demise. Many the thing that you know, many, many, many of of a uh, uh, melanated African American, whatever term you want to call us, godly people, have been lost at the whispers, at the lips of yes. a non melanated mm-hmm. being, and this is just uh, an extreme case, you know. And it's like you, you lie, you, you fry. Yeah, you, you, that's some bullshit. Yeah, you know, I, I hope they yeah. did. And now, even just this, take it back a little bit. They was doing a search in the courthouse, finding right, and found the warrant in a file in mm-hmm. a folder, tucked in the cut that had never been served. So how do you not serve a warrant? The and the fact that the warrant was even uh, made, even way back then, is surprising to me. <laughs> yeah. I thought they would have been like, nah, it ain't happening. But and they what, actually some detective put it away and overlooked it. Yeah, like, hey, uh, oops. 
I'm going to walk out. Look, there's a warrant I'm supposed to serve today. It's on my desk, but I'm going to go take a bathroom break right now. Yeah. And if that warrant is not on my desk when I come back from my bathroom break, I can't go serve it. And you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy about that is that uh, there's a lot of cases like that that wrongs were done. Yes. And the people were still walking around. Like, for instance, the man that everybody said was the actual trigger man on Malcolm X just mm -hmm. only died oh, about, like yeah. two years ago. Like yeah. there was people who were in prison. One guy was in prison saying, I did it, but these other two guys weren't in it, but it was actually this guy that was with me. Mm -hmm. And that man walked around in the open Opening up businesses and living uh, pretty good. They got a few documentaries saw, out yeah, about it. Yeah, I, and he I only recently that. died, so he could have he could have faced justice. So ain't no telling how many other cases it's, that there is documentation that there were other people who were involved. Yes, like in the Martin Luther King assassination, all kinds of things. Well, remember just even, walking around, right? And remember, him in that case, uh, Martin Luther King's family won a, a suit against mm -hmm. the government for their culpability in his assassination. Because I'm not big on well, who conspiracy went to jail? theories. Who went to jail behind for James it, Earl Ray? But here's the thing: no, from no. what I read about James Earl Ray, he couldn't plan. Him. He couldn't plan breakfast. Thank you. So there's no way in the world he had coordinated a full assassination attempt on all that, and literally didn't. Did he have on the tie? I'm not for sure. But you know the actor, Woody Harrelson? Yeah. The white man can't jump. Yeah, I know Woody. You know his father mm -hmm. was a hitman mm. and actually ended up dying in prison. He killed a federal judge, but he was the type of person. In fact, they suspect that he was involved in the Kennedy killing. Mm -hmm. They also suspect that he was involved in the Martin Luther King thing. And when he finally went down, he had killed the federal judge and Woody Harrelson's dad served like 30 some years in prison and died in prison but Woody Harrelson the actor's dad was a person that they sent that the government was sent when they wanted people silenced mm -hmm. and they're saying that he was involved in Martin Luther King but he walked I mean he was in prison for something else yeah but he was never brought to justice or the full investigation because not only him there had, James Earl Ray didn't do that by himself right. so a lot of people walked mm-hmm you know, so, like I said, there's a lot of, if they get to, I'm pretty sure over the years, you know they want to protect each other. So, so, Keisha, when, people, Keisha, so when people thank you die, for in, as always. they'll be finding more warrants and documents right. that somebody overlooked, even exactly. though these cases have been researched. And Cold pulled, cases. College level novels written about them, but no one noticed this warrant. Right, I, I'm and not buying it. I'm not, and I mean, I mean, once again, it just shows. Okay, the... should we talking about the warrant that was found for the lady who set Emmett Till up? Yeah, and there's been the a lion, warrant sitting there. The, the lion, uh, pilgrim. I just be, I just. Say we that. just saying in the uh, on this fourth cases. of mm -hmm. on this fourth of July weekend. Yeah. It's it's yeah we we going heavy tonight. We got a guest that should be here shortly. Also, Melanated Sister Stony Marley. She should be here shortly. Um, she does creative writing. She's a published model. She got a lot of positive things going on. But mm -hmm. while we doing, we got current shit to talk about. Uh, yeah. So you have that. Yeah. Then Back also, to you seen the video of the police officers. I can't remember what city it was in. They put this brother, they handcuffed this brother. I think it was Ackman. Put him in the um, in the uh, police wagon. Didn't put him in the seatbelt. Drove around crazy. And when they uh, came to a hard stop or whatever, this brother tumbled and went into the front of the, uh, the wall of the vehicle. It Moral broke disgrace. his neck and he's uh, paralyzed. This is all on video. Moral disgrace. This this is all on video, and they talking about you can get up. Come on, you can get up. He's like, uh, I can't. I can't oh, you talking about that was Freddie Gray? No, that was in Baltimore. Oh, something. No, since then? this is new. Recent? Yes. Oh man, I ain't even seen it. This is new. Yes, I'll send you the video. In, 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 and in, have in, you seen that video here in the Bay Area circulating about those OPD officers? Yes, you got two old Disgraceful. OPD officers, uh, I get chasing somebody, whatever, and. Unauthorized chase. Yes, uh, of a loss of life of a, I believe it was a nineteen year old. Mm -hmm. You know, so first off, I want to send my condolences to that family. You know, uh, 
prayers is with you guys through this. You know what else time. they did? What was so terrible? They was rookies, and what they didn't know is that when lights and siren come on, it activates their body cameras. Uh -huh. So they was on the body camera saying, "I hope he dies." But this is Thank the you. part that's really jacked up. I'm is that after they chased this individual? Yes. And they realized they had crashed, and they realized that there was bodies. They, because the cars went on the curb and hit several people. Mm -hmm. They drove off, came around the corner, and pretended like they just walked, they just rolled up on them. Yeah. They literally didn't try to help anybody, and they pretended, they got out their cars and said, Oh, what's going on? They literally pretending like it. So they're going to lose their careers as police officers. They should. But and they should be uh, they prosecuted. Should, yeah, prosecuted, uh, not doing their job, mm -hmm. reckless endangerment, abandonment, ab yes. uh, abuse of human rights. Yes. Uh, as a first responder, because police are first responders, if I'm not mistaken. Because the people that got hit by those, the bystanders that got hit, yeah. was people standing at a taco truck. Right. They wasn't involved in this thing on any level and these cops rolled off didn't call no ambulances didn't get out try to help nobody and yeah. literally pulled up on some abbott and costello what's going on exactly what then could you, have caused this and then the motherfuckers wonder why motherfuckers want to defund you bitch ass motherfuckers and uh, yeah i'm yeah what they say on the side of their cars to serve and protect but i i remember something uh a while ago saying that their actual thing of to serve and protect is not doesn't include us I, I, and they I, prove it every, every day every day they in every interaction about you. they don't and it's it's i'm just yeah um yeah i'm not feeling it's it. it's just wild man just that um consistently across the board anywhere in the nation the police are not living up to what you would think of a civil servant should be, and that's no. bananas. And they don't, they don't give a shit. Who, uh, I'm trying to see the kind of case. I, uh, I get a case. Yeah, every officer ain't the same. You're right. True. There's good cops. There's bad cops. There's good politicians. There's bad cop, uh, politicians. There's good gangsters and there's bad gangsters. Yes. There's uh, every there's every that profession. Of honor. Every every. Factor of human fiber has both sides, dude. so I get it. Yeah, there's good but what cops. What about that damn blue line that they have? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Um, because here's the thing: even if I'm the so-called good officer, mm -hmm. if I'm witnessing you doing something immoral or abusing people and I say nothing, then am I really a good officer? Right. Because they do have a culture. Right. They get on us for. Other. Uh, not snitching and all that. The, the no snitch campaign that's throughout the the hoods and whatnot. But then they want you to come and say shit. It's but they won't tell on each other. They don't hold them. They don't hold each self each other uh, accountable for nothing. You know. So well, Keisha, I'm, that's a little less than honest because what policies and laws have been put in place since the defund movement? What what? has the people talking about defunding the police actually done to change the way policing is implemented right it's almost like they're throwing a tantrum oh y'all talking about defunding us we'll show you how valuable we are by doing nothing and see how you like that now but there's no actual policies that can be pointed to that's going to say oh well they can't do this or they can't do that because people are talking about defunding them yeah I think there's been a lot of changes. Kev, hey, what's up, bro? Well, I'm not actually. Oh, we know how changes. we know Kev, because like what when we had uh what Alyssa Victory, who's a mayoral candidate, my on, my, my my attorney, yeah. she was she's, speaking she's on it, Florida. and she's part of the movement. But I don't think any dollar has been taken out of the police budget or any procedures put in place that would hamper their ability. And in this particular case. It was two reckless officers who chased the person to their death, saw other people being, other people laid out and literally ro rolled off and was recorded saying, I hope he died. That's just people That's with a callous disregard no for life. That's no empathy. Yeah. That's, you, and, and, and the thing is, I'm going to just say this, just from my humble opinion. And Keisha, I know you're, you're knowledgeable. Yeah, she knows. Keisha is a is, is very knowledgeable sister mm -hmm. and well-respected. What I will say is, the problem is, you get 
police officers from different areas. Yes. They don't they don't live here. Yes. They didn't they weren't raised here. Mm-hmm. It's just a job. Yes. And if you already have this uh disposition of where you don't particularly care for a certain demographic of people yes. or or you know ethnicity or even if you just I'm not even going to go full racist with it. Mm-hmm. You know cuz I'm not going to say that you have to be full racist but you just got mm-hmm. Uh, this is just a job to you, and you don't right. care about the people. In fact, you're coming in with the I'm a kick ass and go home mentality. Exactly. I'm going to tell you something that a lot of people didn't realize. At one point, 50% of San Francisco police officers had some connection to San Francisco. They either grew up in San Francisco mm-hmm. or they had immediate relatives. Like, oh, your mom and dad grew up in San Francisco and you grew up in San Bruno. But they'll have a that, or your grandmother still lives in San Francisco. Like, there was some type of... 50% of San Francisco police at one point had some familial, direct familial tie to San Francisco. Oakland was 8%. Yeah. They need to... And what's, why would someone who grew up in Livermore or grew up in Modesto have any Stockton, interest coming to uh, stop San, crime in, in, San, Oakland. in, in Oakland? Like, right. what's, what's your connection? Why, why are you check. here? What are you check. doing? So yo, so if you beat my head in, your grandmother is not going to see my grandmother in church and be like, hey, why did he do that? Exactly. Or, and you didn't go to school with me, so you don't know that maybe I'm not the bad guy because you don't know. You just come in, we're all black or brown, and you just beat ass and go home. Exactly. You're just like, I got to do my patrol through these, these same areas with these the same motherfuckers who do the same bullshit and I got to deal with that shit every day and I'm I got to I'm over them overseer officer overseer officer mm-hmm. you know Kara was one told y'all what it was Keisha you're correct she is the, uh, that uh, I, that she feels the structure needs to change at the department yes and Kev has a good point he's saying police are trained to look at police different I mean put at black people different they are and it could be through their own uh, subconscious bias. Yes. You know, from... Which is a real thing. From, yeah, it is. From the way they were raised. And, and once again, to my point of, you got... I'm working in this city, this area, where I didn't grow up in. I have no roots. Yeah. I have no ties to this community. I don't know the nuances of the culture. Right. This and that. I can't tell when somebody's just talking shit or when somebody's an actual threat. Right. You know, I, I have can't no tell ties. when somebody's trying to get over or just get by. Like, I don't, I'm not a part of this culture. So why am I here regulating? Right. Keisha, that's cool. I know. I'm not saying all of them are bad. I'm not. You know, I get it. Some of the ones you know from Oakland, that's great. If you police the area you grew up in and you could yes. be like, you know something? I went to Roosevelt. You know, I went to Ojai. I went to Garfield. Mm-hmm. I went to Mazanita or any of the mother schools that don't matter in Oakland. No, I'm just fucking <laughs> with <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And and I know this area. I know I know that this spot over here, they just, you know, they just be mm-hmm. bullshitting. They just like to sit and chill. Mm-hmm. I grew up amongst this. I know this. Then you I, understand I get it. the culture. Right. I understand. Exactly. I'm a I'm a part of this fiber that's with this. I get it. But if I'm alienated, yeah, and I'm gonna be I'm not going to use my usual term of devil's advocate. I'm just going to be an outside thinker. But if I'm not connected to none of this, yeah, it could be foreign. It's very foreign to me to come and police an area I'm not even familiar with. Now, where the, uh, the question is within myself, do I take it upon myself to try to educate myself and indoctrinate myself to this area yes. and become familiar, or do I just say, "Hey, I'm on shift for 12 hours. Uh-huh. These motherfuckers better with be no in account- line. With no social accountability, right? Like, there's nobody that you went to school with who can hit you and say, "Hey, man, I'm hearing that man, you kind of out here, kind of heavy-handed on cats, man. What's happening? You know them dudes. You know that so and so. Hey, you did something to so and so cousin, and man, he ain't even he ain't even like that." There's right. no one, you don't have any social accountability. You can just crack heads, 
and go home. You're not going to see people in Safeway and be like, hey, man, that wasn't right what you did. Right. You have no accountability. Exactly. You go home to, you know, 25, 30 miles, 40 miles away from the the area where you wreck mm-hmm. shop, yes. and you go home to your family and you're chilling in your safe neighborhood. It's a disgrace that the leadership, and I understand, Put you like this, I understand why Lionel Wilson and those type of people when they were in power didn't make a move, but it's a disgrace that 90% of Oakland Fire Department, one of the highest fire departments in the paid high in the nation, 90% of Oakland PD, yes. like a massive amount of the city of Oakland's budget goes to fire and police, and none of those people are from Oakland or once they started making that six figures, moved to Oakland. It's just that's just disgraceful. And yes. Lionel Wilson and Elihu Harris and all those black mayors. Right. They let that happen on their watch in order to be placed in the power. Right. And the thing about that, like you said, that you don't live here, so therefore your tax dollars aren't yeah. benefiting the area where you police and work so at. So sixty percent of the city budget is it's those out in salaries to build other up areas. Pleasanton. Yeah, all out. What's up, Kenya? What's happening, uh, Essential Admin and Consultant? Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully, I've been trying to convince Keisha to run for office, and maybe What's if happening? she runs for office, she gonna, you know, get these things straight. We should make a movement to draft her because she's very sharp she politically. Is. I'm Keisha. I'm even though we have opposing viewpoints, nah. I respect her viewpoint because she's at. Ed- because she's not. Keish, we gonna we gonna try to get you on this month. I mean, we are gonna try to get it soon. I'm a I'm I message you. We'll, we'll communicate. Cause I like I like your your mind. I'm mm-hmm. you know I'm cerebral nigga. I Kev like, Evans like is Brown. correct. That there is too many inc- incidents. Not this time around, Keisha, but you will eventually. Mm-hmm. You know we need we need uh, people that's homegrown that yes. that are a part of the environment to take positions and and at the same time it's a heavy burden it's not yeah. it's not for the timid it's not something that's an easy task you know the police out there when that kid was shooting up the school they was quite timid and going in and stopping him yeah <laughs> oh that that yeah I'm get on that distraction you know what's funny is that you have so many brothers who graduate from high school and they go into the military and things like that so it's a natural career progression for a lot of white kids that go into the military to come out and then become some sort of law enforcement. I'm wondering why a lot of black kids aren't doing the same. In response to, you know, what Kev says, so many of you feel being a police officer is a sucker job. Well, we got a lot of people are military veterans and all that type of stuff. I mean, the thing about it, I get it. The, uh, here's the thing. I've, I've known police officers that were cool. I've known police officers that weren't cool. You know what I'm saying? Growing up in in my childhood, I can only speak for myself and the mm-hmm. experience I've had. I've had fucked up situations with police officers, and I've had situations where they was like, "Bro, dude, take your ass home. <laughs> you loaded as fuck, dude. Sit yeah. your ass down for a minute mm-hmm. and chill." Or it's even been, "Look, bro, I'm gonna be back through here in like 30, 40 <laughs> minutes. Don't have your ass out here." <laughs> so I, I I've, I've I've I get it. Mm-hmm. I've had both both spoons. Both mm-hmm. wolves have been fed with me with my experience with police officers. Mm-hmm. And I've also had police officers who killed my family members. So I've had the worst of the shit. I've actually been assaulted mm-hmm. and falsely charged with some shit by police officers as well, myself mm-hmm. personally. So I've had both sides of the shit. And it's fuck y'all. It's fuck them. Not all of them, but mm-hmm. fuck them in general. That's just keeping it a buck. Right. It's a, as a black person in America, you have a wide range of experiences with police. But just think the average Caucasian in their interaction with police is always usually pleasant. Yeah, of course. You know, one, hey, buddy. I had an ex-officer who literally told me one of the things that they do, and this is a little tip for y'all. One of the tricks police play is, like, say they pull you over, and you say, why did you pull me over? And they just say, license and registration. They do that yeah. intentionally 
to irritate you, right. to make the confrontation, to make it become a confrontation so that they then can have an excuse to either search your vehicle or escalate force. So the next time you get pulled over and the, and the officer won't tell you why, just remember he's baiting you into a reaction. Yes. So just calm down and don't fall for it. Whereas a lot of white people, if they get pulled over, they get told. Why Buddy, you, oh, why'd you, you pull me over? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, your tail light was out. And, uh, exactly. Well, uh, according to what we pulled up, uh, Winthrop. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's me, Winthrop. Winthrop, uh, yeah, Winthrop Bartholomew. Yeah, yes. that's me. But it's not a coincidence that they don't do that. They are praying that you react. And yes. so many people of us, I've been guilty of this myself. Hey, why the fuck you pull me over? Hey, man, you don't hear me talking to you? Right. And now it goes sideways. Now you're getting aggressive. And that's what they're doing. So, hey, so when you get, have to don't interact get, with them. Don't get baited. As a, as a black person, always remember, when you're interacting with them, they are intentionally doing certain things to, to trigger get a reaction out of you so they can then have an excuse to do it. So don't fall yes. for their traps. Exactly. And, you know. It's just like, remember... I remember in my research of when it came to dealing with the uh, civil rights movements and whatnot back in the 60s, we actually trained ourselves, our people, how to deal with the interactions with, with white people. They sh I've seen videos in study where they show where we they'd have you sitting, like if you went to a whites-only diner at a certain time, whatever, you sitting there, they was training you where brothers was blowing smoke in your face and whatever, trying to irritate you to get you to absorb what was going to happen to you so you could be ready for it. Because it's just like, you know, I, I, I'm i a sports dude. And they still play that game. Yes, they do. Because practice don't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things poorly, you're gonna you play for. Them. Exactly. And you, like you said, you're not prepared for that. You're going you're not gonna know how to react. And also at the same time, if if people aren't trying to tell you and teach you those things, but to I'll be devil's advocate on this point. Mm -hmm. At the same time, when somebody's trying to educate you on those things, you got to be receiving. You got to be able to receive information to be able to process it and use it. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't think that we just the shit. Right. We just know everything, which I mean, don't get me wrong. We know a lot. But and you have sometimes, to be open, like you said. Yeah, you have to be because sometimes you can you could be right and you could be dead right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So on the side of the road with someone who's looking to antagonize you and they're armed or you're not, it's not the time to take a stand or fight a fight a war. You can you can be you can be when all you know that's right. The game they're playing. Yeah, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with asserting your rights and saying, "Hey, hold on, wait a minute." Let them know you know some things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying cower down and punk out and and but none if you of that. Keep calm; it'll confuse them. Exactly. When you respond to them with intelligence, they don't know how to act. They don't know how to respond to intelligence. They're set to, to, to for their clickbait for you to click that. You know, just like the the, uh, you know, for the dudes y'all get this. Women y'all won't baby, but you'll feel what I'm saying. And when you scroll in somewhere and it says, "Hey, it's hot single moms in San Leandro waiting on you," and the dummy gonna click it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the computer virus. Yeah, exactly. So someone with common sense, bait. though, will understand if they come like, no, it's there's not bait. hot I single moms hot waiting single moms for me. Hot single moms in San waiting on me. Because any hot yeah. single mom doesn't have to go on the internet and say, hey, I'm over here, hot single mom. All you got to do is go to the grocery store. Exactly, or the laundromat. <laughs> <laughs> but that's if you're intelligently assessing the situation. You'll get that at three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but... I mean, you have you have that situation. You have the situation in Akron also where the brother, they shot at him. I'm trying to, ooh, I think he was hit 60 times. How, how, Damn, how do you, help me wrap my mind around this, please. And I'm, 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 I'm peeping the comments. Hello, Melva, Miss Johnson, thank you for tuning in. Bonquisha Jenkins, thank you for tuning in. Uh, 60 times he was hit. 60. How do you... That's a whole lot of... 
That's a lot. That's intent. That means in order for them to shoot that many rounds, they have to be they have, How many they have known he was dead. How many and guns? still continued to shoot. And it's like would you we wouldn't even do that to an animal. We was deer how hunting. Many guns? We wouldn't shoot the damn deer. So because of Victoria, thank you for tuning in. How, how many how many officers was involved? Because I don't I don't know that answer. How many officers was involved in this shooting? I'm I'm not quite I, for I, sure. I didn't but, get that number yet. I, but I'm I mean, interested in that number for, for, for him to be shot yeah. sixty times. Because you uh, okay, officers. And you know they miss sometimes too, so there right. had to be more than sixty. That's what I'm saying. Times. He was hit, I believe, sixty, mm-hmm. and it was maybe 120, 90. It was, I think it was over a hundred some shots. That's how for you to get hit. I'm shooting at somebody. For you to get hit. And the human body is only so big because we're not talking about somebody that was. And what you know, was I'm a big dude. Allegedly, I'm a big. Fl- I'm a big. I'm fluffy. Of? You know what I'm saying? I'm fluffy. What was I he own my accused shit. of? What? I'm big. So you, 60 shots to me, and I'm I'm not small. I'm mm-hmm. good. I'm sexy. I'm love handles. I'm amusement park. <laughs> but 60 shots? Can you, 60 hits. That's outlandish. Motherfuckers playing duck hunt on 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 us. That's outlandish. It's like, like. That to fire that many shots, let alone hit somebody that many times, just shows a complete. They didn't view that person as human. Right, exactly, and that that brings to the the conversation of the mentality of the people that is employed to yeah. police the community. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm. We just you know. We going on and on with this, and it's just it's it's astounding. It's it's crazy. Like right, Keish, that's it's crazy. It's it's bull, and we have to continue to, you know, the cycle continues. Same with mass shootings. Same with mm-hmm. the other false flags that happen, mm-hmm. including mass shootings, to get y'all attention and to distract us from what's going on. Kev said, "Oh." If Kyle Rittenhouse was black, seventeen carried assault rifle, dude, he wouldn't have made it out the out the car. Because people would have assumed he was a gang member up to no good, and he would have been apprehended. And speaking if of, he was lucky. Speaking shot of, if he was unlucky. Speaking of that motherfucker, I just seen something where he has a video game app or something. Yes. With a shoot the fake news or some. Yes. That you, they're monetizing. Did anybody buy those fake tears he was crying on? Yeah, no. Are you for real? In fact, right we now? live on the internet. I got, I got to be careful. I got, you know, I ain't trying to get banned again, but I'm really not happy about But I understand where I'm at and where we at. And as we go into this, uh, ooh, that's nice, this holiday week of uh, celebrating this court, y'all go ahead. Y'all set off fireworks and, uh, yeah. All that shit y'all do, Woo! celebrating shit for your depression, y'all didn't have that. How many of them didn't get quite around to Juneteenth, but going all the way on the 4th of July? Exactly. You, you, and so, I'm not trying to outwoke y'all. I'm to the stage I'm, in my life I'm where done. if people celebrate, people. I say, I let people have nice things. It's a go be with your family. Yeah. So if you're doing that, yes. But if you call yourself actually celebrating, Fourth of July. I'm looking at you funny. Month and what it really says. Hey, Rob. Hey, I, Rob. She's supposed to be here. Uh, she said she was supposed. To be here. Thanks for tuning in, Rob. She should be tuning in. I'm waiting for her to message me. You so we're going in on. Kev, that everybody got up and have have a nice meal. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Anyway, anyway ask. Me- and I'm going to be like, fuck the fourth. But I do want to be around fam. I do want to eat. So on the surface, it might appear that I'm not celebrating us gathering. And if we all decide to gather on August 22nd, right. I'm, I'm, there. There. I'm there. Uh, So we you already got your fireworks. I, I, I used to, I, I as a kid, I used to have all that shit. Even mm-hmm. as a mini adult, I used to have all that shit. It used yeah. to be Baghdad. I had all that shit, but I don't fuck with it no more because I've I've really grown up and what this shit mean. 
this correct. Rob, I, I get it. I just, bro, you already know. You know what I'm gonna say. Part of me, I'm here's the thing I'm gonna say with a lot of shit, and that goes for that December holiday that y'all be under the trees doing bullshit. All of, yeah, she's a Borgia. All the other shit. Don't, if you give, if even if you give energy, you giving some of your energy to that shit. Yeah. That I, I'm just gonna say that. Uh, the lie. Now is it good? Hold on. What the? F we up? We on? So also, let's get off the police because I you already know the. Which that one? Like exactly. Yeah, I'm. I, yeah, that's what Caesar Borgia Day is. I know that, but I want them to understand it and go figure it out on their own. So, also you got your boy, and Woo. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna get. They gave your boy. Woo. I'm gonna call him the king of art because he made some badass tunes. They gave that man a thirty piece Popeyes biscuit, but they ain't even no just, soda. They not, they're not exactly thirty piece, no soda, no sauce. It's biscuit. I'm like this. I'm How? at. At the people who were around him, because he was obviously mentally ill, mm -hmm. and the people around him, his enablers, right, should all of them have should be took steps to protect him from himself, since this this he was the bad, and at the day, like on those people on surviving R. Kelly, mm -hmm. I don't really respect them because the parent many only of going, yeah. and many of his partners was going to get young women. The the parents was damn near giving. So people eating his monster appetite. Yes. And then when it came out, everybody wanted to say the bad guy. Well, if you're feeding the bad guy, you're a bad guy. So he was. I'm not mad about him getting 30 years. I'm the mad. fact that yeah, he's the mad. only one standing there getting 30 years because there's a lot of other people who should have been getting time alongside him because he wasn't operating on his own. Right. He had a lot of people enabling him, a lot of people helping him. Exactly. But then someone else put up a thing. One of my friends put up on Facebook said, I really want to talk about it. Uh, how was your grandfather? Whoa. I mean, if you That's, look at, you know, there's a lot of archaeologists in the this, community. Just like, remember, we talked about this several times. Mm -hmm. When we were here, I remember high school, junior high. Yes. Y'all sisters out there, and I. I'm just mm -hmm. keeping it a buck, you know. Young brothers were digging y'all, but y'all was on these niggas with yeah. in the box shelves and the stangs and I the falcon and picked that up was dro dropping you, exactly, <laughs> picking you up. Then the shit. Now everybody want to be all, uh, yeah. You know, everybody want to be. Oh yeah, yeah. it's like wait a minute, it was yeah. part of this shit back yeah, then. Yeah, let's not get self righteous. When there Don't was plenty forget. of R. Kelly's operating. Hell, one of the most popular songs in the early 90s. What the Age boy say? Backstage, underage. Oh, BBD, <laughs> that shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, come on now. You know, suspect lyrics. And 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 we we come in a highly uh -huh. culture. Yes. And I, I think it's fixed. I hope it is. Be trying. It's producer. Yeah, my producer is producer. Too short of lyrics. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all those. I mean, we ain't gonna just you know. But that's the that was the acceptable vernacular. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. back then. Yeah. And now it's socially unacceptable now. Mm -hmm. But that's the shit that happened back then. Yes. And I, I've seen, uh, I've seen uh, the shift in fake consciousness, and I'm gonna call it fake consciousness. Yeah, because the, the Me Too movement, some of that shit was quite acceptable in 2003. Yeah, the tip drill is still one of the best videos of all yeah. time. I don't give a fuck what you say. Now he'd be canceled, and all the and nah. the women would be looked at as abused and exploited. You know, that's the thing. With, that's one of the problems with going back and prosecuting certain things. Rob just said something. Go ahead. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Because 
we looking at it from 2022 standards, well, then wasn't the same standards in 1991. You know? Yeah. Rob said, it's weird that he was convicted of racketeering and violating the Man Act, not statutory rape. Exactly. Across state lines. Because... It's the same thing they brought Jack Johnson down with. Exactly. Because you have to think of, if I want you to sit the bench, the I have to charge you with the big shit. Bonquisha. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was socially unacceptable to adults that cared. But the thing was, it's just like when in families that had the incest and the, mm-hmm. and the, all this shit, shit was swept under the rug and everybody turned to ignorant blind eye. Because like you said, R. Kelly was the bag. Let's keep it a buck. Yeah. He was the bag. I would have chased off all the underage chicks and kept him out of trouble. He would have fired me. I would have protected him. I would have made sure that he didn't give in to his own worst impulses, which is what security. Oh hell no, and you know that nigga. T- you yeah, know that nigga it, trolling. I'm not, I'm, not, you tro- I'm, not finna, I'm not finna. I'm not finna fuck with Mark that. Mark Anthony, quit trolling. Yeah, we own some real but shit. I feel don't you understand. Is, uh, security is not just to protect you from the public. It's to it's supposed to protect you. I mean, you know, from, from the public from you as well. How I'm going to be a million dollar dude mm-hmm. and you make your living off being around me and then you allow me to go shoot heroin or whatever. You're going to be like, no. Nah. And if a drug dealer come around, you're going to chase them off. Right. Because you're trying to protect me. Exactly. But so people be too, too invested in protecting their personal interests than the moral code that should be involved. But like, hey, but Kev, like you're saying, like it was pointed out, even though Jack Johnson women of the age, that man act, white slavery as they used to call it, yes. going across state lines is basically what R- what did R. Kelly in. And that's a law that was put in place to basically stop Jack Johnson. So here it is 100 years later. Mm-hmm. Here's a black man being convicted off of a law that was put in to stop the biggest entertainer of the day 100 years ago. And it's just like... Even though R. Kelly is wrong, yes. you got to look at the parallels and be like, wow. He was allowed to be wrong. So let this be a lesson to any up-and-coming entertainers. If you're a black person, not only should you conduct yourself morally, it's imperative that you conduct yourself on a moral level yes. because they are waiting for you to fall. They are waiting for you to give in to your impulses, yes. and they will give you more years than you've been alive. You know, so just, man, uh, do the right thing, Marley's y'all. here now. Uh, Outside? Yeah. Hey, one of y'all, go open the front door. Open the door, please. Yes. Thank y'all. Open, the, guess is here. open the glass you know, door outside. Just go outside and open the door and bring her in But here. don't let the door close behind you. Yeah, or you locked out there. Yeah, it's heavy that, and you know, and my thing is, is that R. Kelly was a sick dude. Yeah, he, and this and that. So please don't take this as any sort of defense of R. Kelly. I'm not defending. But, him. Never but you got to understand him. that for every R. Kelly who's obviously guilty, mm-hmm. they round up a lot of brothers who are not guilty, and hammer them the same. So we got to. So only thing I could say is look out for each other. If you got somebody that's got some sickness in they in them, yes. help them get help. And if you got somebody who's not necessarily sick but they conduct themselves recklessly. Make sure that they that you try to educate to them the consequences of their actions. Just as brothers, mm-hmm. let's look out for each other. Because right. man, after that Aaliyah thing, man, nobody that in his circle was supposed sh- to let anybody, anybody under the age of twenty one get anywhere near that man. Right. He should have been. He should have been uh, strapped down to a gurney, and we're gonna have a and, jump right in. So we're gonna. To, we're going to jump right into our guest tonight. Thank you for coming. How you doing? Good, how are you? So how do you feel about all the controversial Good. things that have been going on? We've been talking yeah, we've been talking about controversy and, and whatnot. We talked about R. Kelly and the uh, Emmett Till, the white chick that her uh, warrant was served and whatnot. But mm-hmm. we're going to 
We're gonna make this last. Chair and Vegas. if you if it's you good partake, that you brought that up, yeah. but well, if you don't, you. But, you don't we don't get, to, yeah. but we don't get that level of sympathy. He brought up that R. Kelly was molested as a child. I, I get that. There are people. Who there are our, avoided prison. There because, are our oh, Shelleys out there too. There are our Shelleys out there too. But I the thing is, there's white that. people who have been said, "Well, he was abused. That's all. He was damaged. He needs help." We don't get them type of breaks. We go to prison. Rob, take, no get on said, her about no being one, late. I'm a, no one has sympathy no, for us about on the show. Get on what we went about through. Being late. <laughs> so, yeah, what was you late? Stop. Hey. We, we, we already talked about it. She already hit me. She was in constant contact. Thank you. So, I'd like to, what's up, Kev? I'd like to welcome Ms. Stoley Martin to the show. Uh, hello, hello. Tell everybody where they can find you. We're going to switch topics, y'all. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of talking about evil. <laughs> I got to go deal with evil for the next few weeks, so I'm tired of talking about evil. Okay. Well, I'm Stony. Um, I do a little bit of everything. I got to label myself as Jill of all trades because I really just do everything. Um, licensed cosmetologist. <laughs> uh I'm in a community I've actually started when I was young, um, cheerleader, cheerleading coach to uh, a troubled youth mentor for Terrence Kelly Youth Foundation. Mm-hmm. TK. So, and that was yes. the young brother out of Richmond, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. That um, played for De La Salle. De La Salle, yeah. Yes. I remember. Rest in peace. Um, yeah, I remember young man. Yeah, so started there and then, um, you know, started linking up with other foundations throughout the Bay Area. Also, I travel too, so I was linking up with Atlanta, Houston, New Orleans, all over the place. Mm-hmm. Basically, my foundation, arts and culture, I'm trying to build this bridge, this gap between communities. Um, and I started my book club, the Dope Era Book Club. That's how it started. Hello, Samantha. Um, after Fab dropped his first book, Mrs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fab. Um, yeah, did you feature my book yet? No, we did not. So mm-hmm. we got to get your book featured. <laughs> yes, we okay. have to hear more about that. So then um, pretty much from there, I started doing like um, homelessness projects around mm-hmm. the area. So we started housing like um, homeless women and their children, getting them into jobs and working programs, schools, things like that. Um now I'm like traveling models, still doing hair, have a hair salon, um, mother to a four year old. Tell where they can find you on social media. I'm on Instagram for now. Just Instagram social media, uh Stony Marley. I have my um link tree in there so you will be able to connect with me through email, text message, um, as well as website is coming soon in a couple of weeks, so yes. Okay, so and we've been trying to link up for a minute because yes. my 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 good my good brother Capillary, the one who turned me on to you, and he's like, man, you need to network with the sister. He messaged me, and I remember I messaged you. Right. This was about a year ago, yeah, it was hell long. I was like, hey, ago. what's up? I'm like, I'm like Nuke told me to uh, network with you. What's happening? Right. And he's like, yeah, okay, cool. So I've been working on trying to get her here for a minute, but people, everybody's schedule stuff be going on, and uh, you know. So we got her here. Yes. So, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> where did you grew up in? Berkeley, California. Okay, B town representing. All over the bay, though. I traveled. <laughs> where did your activism start? Tell the people about you. This is about you for the last. When I was young, um, honestly, I guess too. I grew up with all boys, nine boys. I was the only girl. So that was just the boys, not including the men. So um, it started with them just watching them grow up and always getting in trouble with the law. And because they were boys, they were black. Were they targeted men. or were they bad actors? Um, Let's keep it one. So I'm going to say it was a couple of times that. Combination? Yeah, a combination. A couple of times my brother got pulled over just with me by him, like, you know, just because he was black. No, nothing at all. He had lots at the time. So. Now explain the significance of that you can be targeted. Because I revealed 
to my young lad over there the other day that I've spent time in jail and he just was just absolutely Befuddled. astounded. Like, how could this be? Everybody that goes to jail is a bad person. So I think he's having the trouble of correlating that I'm not a bad person, no. but yet. Yes. Sometimes um, we can be feared as well because of our intelligence, um, our talent. It could be a lot of different things why we can be targeted. Um, the way we was raised, all types of things, the environment we was in, neighborhoods. So, it's complex. Yeah, um, especially I mean, us. And that's why, you know, I started this because I have a four-year-old and I'm a single mom. So I'm like, you know. I do everything for him. I want to protect him as much as I can. Of course. And That's I know I'm not going to be there all the time. So. Now, you know. can, can I interject some silliness into the into the conversation? Are you going to do the McDonald's shit? <laughs> you know I'm going to do it too. I'm like, we ain't got to argue over how many motherfucking Happy Meals. So you were blessed <laughs> to have a couple more children. <laughs> and somebody only brought. McDonald's okay, 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 okay. You saw where I was going. I seen that. I seen that. You in the neighborhood? Um, like, the oh, thing is, that, that I seen that video, mm-hmm. and I thought that was crazy, ridiculous. That was I don't even want to talk about that. I thought that was ridiculous because, for one, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, if that's not all his kids, I mean, let him have his kid or, you know. Then at the same time, no, he grown. And he should have took the initiative to at least either take his son or bring some food back. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, but you all, we all know that that was a skit. It's hit, right. It was all, mm-hmm. Motherfuckers do anything to go viral. Exactly. And, and that's why I was just like, why you put it there? I could have. <laughs> oh, I thought you was talking, so I hooked I, it up. Oh, everybody. Like we ain't hiding. I mean, still. <laughs> uh, so. I know we had talked because you messaged me. You have a creative writing uh, writers workshop workshop going on. It was last weekend and the weekend before, right? Yes. And so, talk about that and how did you get into that? Was- um, writers workshop is basically um, like a course from the book club. Why? Because while we was doing our book club meetings. Everybody was talking about how they wanted to get back into writing. I'm and, in the book club. You know um, how. And I was the number one in the world author. He was on Amazon <laughs> at one point. Tell for them. like four hours. My pen game, imagine it. I was number one in the world for four hours. Before I... No one can ever take that away from me. Hey, oh, congratulations. Wow. <laughs> was like a, it's... But the fifth hour, though, I, I dropped to number nine. You still but... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, so, um, you know, writer's block is something that we all deal with, um, especially me. I'm a writer as well, and writer's block was something. So I started the writer's workshop. Why? Because... Um, my son, he likes to write. I like to write. And sometimes we get caught up in life that we don't take a few minutes to just sit back and write. Yeah. So a I page started a day. A pa- at least, you yes. know, a couple of sentences. Like I was telling Oh, but don't them, get me wrong. I've never lived up to that, but I still <laughs> And you don't it. have to even write a page. Like I was telling you. one of my, um, my writers the other day, I said, look, Sometimes you can just sit somewhere in an area, see Do something, it. and jot whatever you see. Could you know? It. That's it. Go back home. A couple hours later, you look at that note, and you can create a whole story based off of what you were just looking at. Like, yes. it depends. You know, motivation, sometimes music. Sometimes you just write down whatever you have on your mind. You don't have to continue to write or stay focused on even, like, some book writers, authors. You don't have to stay focused on the title. Like, you want to do the title last. So, that's pretty much what the writer's workshop was for. Sometimes the title, though, can take five weeks. And that's why you do it last, because you don't want to focus on the title. Yeah, if you put the title, now you box yourself in. exactly. I use working titles. (laughs) Yeah, if you start with a title, now you're confined to whatever that title is. Exactly. Oh, facts. (laughs) Facts. You know me, I write shit, so I, I do the title. Just like even when I used to write raps. I would do the hook maybe first sometimes, mm-hmm. maybe. Sometimes it would just they come after. The, yeah. Because if you write the hook first, depending on the mode you in, the hook will box you into what you're talking about. Yep. But if you just free form write yep. and let it flow, 
you then might you not can need a hook. A hook. So or you can, important yeah, though. you can create the hook, you can create the title just based off of the the subject, the topic, right. the body of it's it. Free I wrote my first book in 60 yeah. days. My second book, I'm in my second year of working on it. It's all right. <laughs> no, if you see a little bit of progress I've made in these two years on the second book, you wouldn't be like, that's all right. You'd be like, dog, Rob, what's wrong with you? Oh, Rob <laughs> said he started with the title and write the story around the title. I, I get it. Yeah. I do that with my movie scripts. If, if that's, and that's the thing about it, it's it's, it's a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. I mean, because it could box you in, but if that's what you're specifically going to write about, I get that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Rob was on the show just the other week because yeah. he just... That's that's my that's but my. You know, I do that with my movie my scripts. Yeah. Title first, then I write the story around the title. But on my books, I'm trying not to get locked into the title because your mind starts going and, and characters that's how my and as you develop writer's block, you know? Writer's block is a motherfucker because I've been remember we've been talking about stuck. like I'm I'm surrounded by authors. Y'all all creative writers, Rob, and I got some other mm-hmm. frat brothers and whatnot, and that write. Let's collaborate. I'm, Let me I'm, hand this I'm over on, to somebody and move on. And I life. wanted to go to your creative writing show. workshop because I was like, man, I'm down. I want to go. But I had other commitments. I was like, me, you hit me. He's like, man, you, this is what's going on. I'm like, damn, I want to go. But I got other stuff Y'all going. Y'all in person? I'm actually about to start doing them again in live, well, through Zoom and in person. So Because yeah. we you were, you had here... You did L.A. Sacramento. and Sac. Yeah, yeah I, I travel. You know, have car. We'll travel. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I had some um, little hiccups. I had my health because I don't rest a lot. So, you know. Are you pushing gotta, yourself? Yeah, I got to take care of myself. You, you know, like to. I said, I'm a licensed cosmetologist salon owner. Selfish. So Tell them everybody what you're kind of telling you. This, this so about to tell I do them you have find? a sal- salon, a hair salon. I am the owner. It's me and my mom. Black owned um, business black supporter. Black owned business. Moms and daughter. She have two daughters. So mm-hmm. it's me and my little sister as well. She do eye- eyelashes. I do She's mostly. Esthetician. I'm most right, and I mostly um, specialize in locks, color, um, natural, but mainly locks. I love me some locks. I used to have locks. I cut them I off, know. but I am growing them back. So, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, I have a salon in Vallejo. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, I'm by appointments only, only because I'm traveling. I also travel to my clients. I have clients in San Jose. I have clients in um, Santa Cruz, Sacramento. So I travel, Manteca. You can shout out um, your shop. This is Good Vibes Hair Designs. Good Vibes Hair Design. Check Pink it. Door on Tennessee. Tell me the address. We right across the street from Hinton Barber College. Oh. We not only when we both black owned businesses. That's what's up. So you know, we, I promote, I promote us. You know, for I, sure. That's, that's for us. For sure. I, I, that's for sure. Um, what do you have? Because you know we own Fourth of July yes. weekend. What do you have going for the summer? What projects, what things do you have coming up and working so, on? What's um, keeping you busy, sister? What's keeping me busy is I have a lot of uh, modeling shows coming up, fashion shows, That's what's up. Um, hair shows. I will be traveling with that. I have a couple of shows in L.A. coming up, um, 16th, and I have to get the other dates. But I do, uh, too, have some shows in Miami. Um, I will be traveling out there. I also have a cleaning service in Miami, so I will be out there. Multifaceted. Doing that. <laughs> she does hair okay. and she makes sure it's clean. For sure. So yeah, you seven know. streams of income to be a millionaire. Yes. You'll get that at three in the morning. <laughs> and then to um, I will be going to Atlanta because I have a business partner out there, mm-hmm. Taj Mahal. Shout him out. He's also from the Bay Area. Shout out to Taj. What's um, happening? He, uh, we got some things going on, like paint and sit as well as, yes. um, you know, he do a lot with his hands, electricians, so sometimes I be One of those paint and sit that paint guys sips is allow their women to go to, or My one wife of those just did paint and sit. It, it's both. Um, yeah. We do co-gender. Why? Because 
we enjoy every I saw day. one on the shade room um, the world starts <laughs> up where Cat was just parading and I was like somebody need to paint some clothes on that dude man oh yeah I mean they <laughs> so had those some of them hey, yeah, we go to strip clubs you can have that shit yeah, I'm not for equality in certain things um, but some well mine's my paint and sips is mostly I've done fundraisers church fundraisers um, okay I've so nobody's like nude at the church no fundraiser. no okay. I've done right, well, that's parties, after that's when you play for the <laughs> Dude, that's the other building fun. <laughs> so yes, I mean I'm I'm I want to do one of those too. Yeah. That's super exciting. Yeah, I, I think it. art and expression of art is is the shit. There you go. You know, I'm I'm I I like I said I'm I'm humbly cocky. Y'all know that's my term. I got an ill ass pen game. I be on some shit for sure. And but I don't be inspired all the time. I can go dormant for years, but sometimes I get inspired and I just, mm-hmm. and like you said, a page a day to doodle, I'll doodle some shit. Or sometimes like the last time I was inspired, right, is a page on IG I follow that is just pictures, mm-hmm. different, different shit. It could be, you've seen my shit. Mm-hmm. And so I look at the picture and I just start freestyling some shit just based on the picture of just what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. And I just, boop, 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 on my phone, it just, boop, 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 and I'll post it. And it's just, boom, instant. Then I'll get to some real, I do both. But lately, the last time I was inspired, I just was in the mood and was like, damn. And so I just found that little bit of inspiration. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, let me just pen some shit. I think, because one of the things with art, expression, writing, just for me, what I was taught and learned, because everybody has a brain. Everybody don't use their brain. Everybody has a brain. But if you keep too much in your head, mm-hmm. it gets cluttered. And you forget shit. Yeah. You write something down, it's like a computer. it becomes real. No more storage, yeah. no more space. Right. You got to yeah. defrag your hard drive. Not yeah. just an idea swirling in your and head. And then you got, you got the shit we was talking about earlier that happens and all the other stuff that going on and you got all this because you we are creative beings mm-hmm. that's what that's where fold Caesar Borgia and I don't fuck with people but <laughs> I'm just saying we are some creative beings and we possess in our core the light of the light I'm just gonna leave it at that when I say that don't get too heavy on it <laughs> I'm not I'm give a little bit you'll get that at 315 there you the go morning. but Duck said, oh, remember we used to freestyle night for two hours? Oh, yeah, exactly. You know me. I got bars. Shit, have like you, candy. Have you had anybody in your writing groups write write a full book or script from the from an idea that sparked within the group? No. How does that I work? have not. Um, not an actual book, mm-hmm. but it's been poetry. Mm-hmm. It's been um, just little autobiographies, little things, mm-hmm. um, short stories not really a book Mm -hmm. so i am actually working on a couple of books myself i've been working Mm -hmm. on for a couple years but i'm actually about to put this health book together because i actually been dealing with a lot of health issues Mm -hmm. um health as well health as well Um, pour me another shot you know so (laughs) i guess i'm gonna break down a little bit go for it um so back in 2015 I um, went through like a cancerous tumor thing Mm -hmm. Um, and they had to do the surgery and everything and they caught it before it started spreading. So, um, praise to the most high. There you go. Mm -hmm. With thanks always. Always. So, um, you know, I kind of like went through a little depression because. You know, so much going on. Um, I was super busy at the time. I was actually promoting and, um, well, promoting and doing, like, club events down south in Atlanta with Trill Fam and them. So I was mm-hmm. with, like, Lil Webby and them. Um, Shout out to them. You know, so I was a little busy. And at the time, I kind of, like, slowed down as well. I was helping my stepdad with his truck company because he have a truck company moving. Um, Shout out to the entrepreneurs of the world. Mm-hmm. Black businesses are all booming. We, we support so, us. So, you know, um, doing all of that. 
so it kind of still was still moving, 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 and that kind of slowed me down. So sometimes when I slow down, I be like, can't do nothing. So understand. I was on bed rest for a good four months. So I went through like a little mini depression, mm-hmm. and at the moment, I had um, a couple of people in my corner that actually both passed away, two thousand nineteen. Oh, but um, they both like helped me through that. Both told me like, you know, you gotta keep pushing, you gotta keep moving, you gotta take care of yourself, you gotta, you know, do what you really want to do because two hair is tearing me up. So <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. they like was on me about that, things like that. But I I moved through it, got past it. So I like revamped my whole everything, yeah. and I started writing on that. So it was like just me writing about my health and my experience with the whole cancerous thing because Mm -hmm. I went through things like friends didn't believe that I was going through this. Like they really was like, you're a liar. And I'm like, whoa. They're like, you word so well. How can you lie about something that Uh, deep? So, you know, um, I I went through like all of that, all the emotions and things like that. So I kind of got over it. I'm like, whatever. It's life. So I just started writing. So that kind of inspired me to do that. Um, Shortly after that, uh, somebody reached out to me about doing modeling for a magazine. And I was, well, he reached out to me back in 2018, but then I finally gave him a chance 2020. So it was like, okay, uh, Women Crush Worldwide, um, based in New York. Mm -hmm. So they've been running for about six years now, seven years now. Um, And I did their fifth issue, the Ganja Goddess Mm -hmm. issue. Okay, we we believe in the in the earthly herbals. Listen, all I'll be partaking as soon as we finish. <laughs> I started before I got here. No. <laughs> yeah. So okay, um, did that. Now y'all know why she was late. No, <laughs> so I did that. Um, yeah. that actually, I was super like stage fright because mm-hmm. I don't do well like cameras and all that. Mm. I'm really shy, but I'm trying to get out of this whole shyness because I know it's like only fear. But whatever the case is, um, I did that and I was really excited because right after that, I was like cooking um, in our little, we had an Airbnb, a little mansion Airbnb. Mm. And I was cooking and then we had a guest artist come. So it was like all her entourage that came with her and then they see me cooking. I'm plant based. There you go. I was cooking um, BTB. not just plant-based food, but all of the models was eating too. So I was cooking like seafood and chicken and steaks and stuff like that, right? So they're like, you cooking this stuff without tasting your food? Yeah, I've been cooking for years. Same. I don't <laughs> eat beef or pork, I but I, I, I can cook. It's like right. muscle memory. Exactly. So I got hired to do um, an artist one of Gucci Mane's artists um, party in Vegas but the thing is I learned something from him he didn't want to work with me because he said my prices was too cheap so he told me I need to raise my prices you know I can cook but my prices was too cheap so it shows my value so I need to raise up my prices okay. so it business, can be valuable knowledge. so that's one little you know Mean game I went through out there, but yeah, he he wasn't the only one. Um, you know, Sada Baby did too with the locks. He was like, So I raised my prices, that was a couple years ago. <laughs> he was you like, You know, to. with the hair, Inflation. you know, Come you gotta do plant this plant based since 2018, so four years. Was that a result of your health scare that made you decide to go that direction, or was something so, where you were already going? It was a route I was already going. Um, since I was younger, I always claimed the Rastafari uh, culture lifestyle. Alrighty. And what happened, I was like 11 years old, and I drew this blunt on the picture. <laughs> and my, my stepdad at the time, he was like, uh, you don't know nothing about this Rastafari lifestyle. Like, you need to learn more. So I started like, learning more than I did. I was a huge Bob Marley fan. Okay, mm-hmm. still am. 
down the mortgage. Course, course. Whatever the case you. is. Try and I. Um, Idy, Idy. You know, learning about his life and then, you know, his his health and everything because he went through cancer mm-hmm. as well. Um, but he plant based because of the whole Rasta thing, and then I started learning more because of I was in school for pharmacy, so I started learning about the medication and different mm-hmm. foods and things like that. But taking the knowledge from when I was younger about the Rastafari culture and then applying it with the pharmacy, I decided that I was going to give up meat eventually, or right. just all animal products. And um, 2015, when I went through my instant in situation i said mm-hmm. listen what i'm gonna do is give myself three years to wing myself off and go completely plant-based so um i started off with you know well i wasn't really eating pork like that but i started off with the beef and mm-hmm. you know then i went to chicken first well i went to chicken it's because i started researching and i started noticing that turkey was healthier than chicken yes so um i you know, I got off a of chicken, and then turkey was the last thing. But um, milk was like the very, very last thing, only because I was craving. I like I was craving, cause I make the bombest mac and cheese. So you know, I was I craving got, the mac and cheese. True. I, I was it. craving ice cream, cause I'm like an ice cream person. Yeah. So I was just craving so much. Actually, yeah, I'm like, I, I can't. Like I wasn't drinking I the milk. Drunk milk in. Yeah. Ooh. See, I don't drink the milk, yeah, no uh, but I was still indulging, and um, in, the, in, the, in the tributaries of the yeah, river. Of milk, I get it. Yeah, yeah, so I gave it up. Uh, probably 2019, January 2019. I just was like, I'm done. Mm. Um, but you had already. So you got vegan mob on point. speed now. No, I actually. Ooh, don't be mad at me, but I never tried it before. You ever ever, no. Thank never. God. But I'm gonna try them. Um, I keep saying I am. Okay. Oh my God. Yes. So, brother Taylor. So, so um, I got a question yes. for you from the audience. Steve yeah. says, "Do you use your writing for personal therapy?" Um, yeah, personal therapy, somewhat. Uh, and then sometimes I use it for business purposes. Um, a lot of ideas. A lot of numbers. I'm a number person. I love math and science. Numbers so, yeah. yeah, I do a lot of numbers. Yeah, um, numbers. It's paramount. But it is therapy for me because writing is something as well as music. I don't do music, but I love music. <laughs> yeah, it's the frequency. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, anything else? What else? Yeah, what else you want to share with us? Go ahead. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, about that is journey. When's the next? Do you have any more workshops coming up? I do have. Um, so it will be next Saturday and Sunday. Okay. I have my mornings and my afternoons. So the morning class will be starting at ten, and um, the afternoon will be twelve. And where will these be located? This will actually be on Zoom. On Zoom? Okay. Yes, this will and be through Zoom, and I have everything on Instagram in my links, on Linktree. Um, you can register for either Saturday, Sundays. I'm about to post your uh, your Instagram on here. Okay. And once, um, basically, you register, you get added to the mailing list, so I will keep you updated with all of the zoom meetings and all the events that i have going on um because i do a bunch i know we follow each other on ig is that yours on facebook janisha stoney i've I, I seen that yes but. that's me janisha stoney winston so i am a winston <laughs> i'm gonna put you i don't know if you want to get that's your personal Wait, right you're winston from berkeley yeah yeah don't listen mm-hmm. listen he knows history. So. <laughs> oh, damn. They this... damn they got streets named after them and built. Listen, it's high. Winston's in, in Blair. I mean, in, uh, Richmond, too. Yeah. No, one of my good close and pals Sacramento. is a Winston. So a Winston here's a question. Berkeley, yes. and he's also Anthony, in Sacramento. As Anthony well. said, <laughs> Have you ever gotten to acting or directing? Not really the directing. I've tried the acting thing. I'm really shy, but I love acting. Um,. You're at a movie studio. We do all that. 
Yeah. She so, knows. She yeah, knows where she at. I know where I'm at. Um, I'm just, like I said, I'm breaking out of this whole fear mm-hmm. cloud that's over me. Um, Understandable. Like I said, when I went through my whole cancerous experience, it actually, I feel like this is something that I believe. When you go through something like a surgery or something, it takes a piece of you. Yeah. Um, physically as well as mentally. Uh, why? That. Because they're taking a piece of your DNA, so it takes away and from your mind every time. Your shit for something else, but that's yeah. a, you know, right. We already know. I'm, I'm highly aware of the shit they do. Research yeah. Henry at a lax. Mm-hmm. No, for real. Um, yeah. So when I when I went through that, I felt like it took a piece of my creativity and my strength. Um, so I'm like kind of finding too. myself again. Um, it's it's exciting though. Mm-hmm. It's exciting because I'm trying so much. Uh, I'm to I'm creating a schedule because I used to like work out four times a day. So I'm trying to get back into that because that's where because I'm always so busy doing hair, standing in one position, things like that. So, you know, I'm not really you gotta be cognizant of what you're doing and how you're doing. These okay, I got these two niggas. Questions. No, they just oh. saying you seem really timid and shy, and, and my little brother, he's watching also. He said, "Come out the shell, love. The world is yours." I'm hey, actually, I'm actually getting the, I'm actually getting the opposite. I'm not getting timid and shy. Something. I'm getting focused. It's my job to make her feel comfortable here. That's what we working on. We didn't get the pregame. Shut the fuck up and watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking with y'all, but yeah, for real though. Okay, we didn't get the pregame combo. We I get a feeling that when you lock into stuff that you're really passionate about, there's no timidness at all. That is true. Yeah, I mean. Once I'm in it, I'm in it. Cause I, she me was, she I'm walking in straight in. And we're going and longer than we would have been. I don't give a fuck about. I'm extremely I'm passive. Awful. I've had people tell me, oh, you're really passive or you're really detached. And I'll be like. Shit, I'm hell on wheels if it's something I'm trying to get after. And that's true. But other yeah. than that, if it's something that just is, I'm they say la vie. Right. All right. But, then, but, uh, but, but it's going to take an army to stop me from getting at what I'm trying to get at. Right. And I'm going to say, like I said before, shout out to my man Capillary for one. He turned me on to you. Because remember when I messaged you, was, I don't remember when it was because I've had, it, I, it, it was had a while ago. It was 2018 or 19. He was like, hey, was, he hit me. He's like, bruh, you need to network. You should follow her. Follow. He hit me. He messaged me like, bruh, man, network, hit her and tell her I sent you and you yeah. hit her network. And I was like, all right, bruh, I got you. We were on I was like, hey, uh, bruh, Capillary hit me right. and to network. And because, you know, I just like, I like networking. I, I'm just about us, like you said, networking, reaching out to people. Learning people, giving people the opportunity okay. to come and uh, and spread because your network determines your network. Mm-hmm. You know, and you get to the world where people talk about they circle so small that it's a dot now, and I understand that on one aspect of the world, right? But at the same time, it's if a you whole world out there, if you one person around. Nine out of ten, around nine motherfuckers who ain't doing shit, you're going to be the tenth. Yep. And I've always told people, if I'm the smartest person in the room, I shouldn't I'm be in the room. wrong room. That's real. I always want to go out and, even if it's something I don't understand, because me, I'm a sponge. I want to learn some shit. I was just like, hey, what's going on? What you got going on in your world? I was like, oh, okay, cool. I seen you. I messaged you. I was like, hey. Russ said to network, and you was like, okay, well, this is what we're doing. And then I was like, okay, let me see if I can make it work. But, you know, it's been a minute. Yeah. But that's just, you know, the path for the universe because we don't own shit. But that this, hurts. maybe some clothes. And speaking of clothes, shout out shout out to my bro, bro, White Out hey. for the shirt. You know, ain't no business like town business. Shout out to my bro. He will be on the show next week. Shot him out real quick, but I've, I've I've been like I said I've been in communication with you and whatnot for a minute, watching you do what you do. You know I'm a fan of all of us, everything we doing. For sure. 
Oh, damn, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's the thing about live, because why it's live. Let me say it one more Go thing. Go for it. Because you had asked me to, um, the reason why I started the writer's workshop. Yes, there you so go. So the reason why I started the writer's workshop is because um, back in March, I went to L.A., Mm-hmm. And I ended up meeting someone. The person I ended up meeting, he uh, is an executive produ- producer. He produced the last two Spider-Mans. Um, whatever the case is, I ended up meeting him. We talked about working together. But he also... Uh, let me just say this. <laughs> well, he's free he, you can... he was... Uh, not was. He is the fourth smartest man in the world. Okay? With an IQ of um, 197. Nowadays, it's Did he ever cut that hair? Mine's is a family secret, but <laughs> go ahead. Did he ever cut that hair? Did he ever cut that hair? No. He had a little bushy thing going. Who so I know exactly so what you're talking about. Yeah, we know. The, okay, no. And he he's, cut the hair. he's not the fourth, he's actually the sixth. So, and I was just about to say, bird. so <laughs> nowadays. Um, no, he is in the top five because the two people at the top, Christopher Langner, is, is a fraud. But number two is Terrence Tao, and he's authentic. I, I fit in there somewhere. <laughs> but Christopher Langman is number one. I don't remember my Park, ranking anymore. And Marilyn I Valsant. I think I got it tattooed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I did that. And I said, oh, he told me I don't have... Um, a team like I have all these ideas but mm-hmm. I, I'm by myself like I do everything so I relate. I'm basically draining myself I don't have enough time to create what my vision is mm-hmm. so he told me to create a team so mm-hmm. the writer's workshop is basically the team that I explained that to at the beginning like right. this is what I'm looking for this is what we're doing I'm actually bringing you guys in into arts and culture to be members of the book club because it's a part of the book club. Right. And Cause Cause actually, that's what, that's what Capital, that's what Larry said. He said, join the book club. And then I was like, all right, that's good. I'm on it. I'm joined. I'm fine. I'm like, okay. Because I know y'all was doing lives and, and my schedule is, you know, I'm busy. But right. I'm just like, okay, I'm fucking with it. I'm going to follow it because, hey, we I'm going to support network, us. Um, it's a networking circle. So we have teachers and um you know, district administrators. We have <laughs> engineers wow. and producers and, you know, all types of people from every different field that you can think of that's right. in there. So what I'm trying minds. to turn it into is a coursework. So everyone create their own course, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but that's sometimes working with creatives. That's as easy as shepherding cats or something. That's that's true. Because everybody has their own style, their own way they do things, and like you said, herd is like herding cats. Like like you know, I I always use myself as the example, mm-hmm. and I never put myself on the platform. I just speak from myself from a, a lower state, which I'm not lower, but I'm just trying to break it down humbly. for the common people. Yeah, I'm humbly cocky. Like I said, I can write something. I can be inspired. For four minutes and for a year and a half, you're going to be, I just ain't found it. Mm-hmm. So I get it. It's like, you want me to do what? Right. So I get it. The herding cats, I get it. Because well, you got to look at it like this. So many people that you work with in creative collaborations, I'm just going to put it out there. And I hopefully some of my past collaborators are watching and they get offended. But. Ninety-seven no. percent of the people that you work with in creative spaces are essentially full of shit. Some are full of shit intentionally. Mm-hmm. They're That's just true. trying to latch on to your creative energy. And some people don't know they're full of shit. Yes, and, th- and then there's some people who are so ass backwards that it's going to be a full of shit result. But they're not. But they don't have malice with it. Like, mm-hmm. I tell people sometimes... It's like, I'm with the shits, mm-hmm, but... Mm-hmm. Like, if we go to jail, I ain't going. That like, for instance, <laughs> like, for instance I've, written, I've written 15 scripts, yeah. and I've produced six films that have went national. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people want to collaborate with me on scripts, and they want to work with me, and they have certain Just ideas. The and then they come, and then they basically are trying to reinvent the wheel, mm-hmm. or 
Because, see, there's certain, there's all kinds of creative aspects. Everybody, like, for instance, where you said some people do the title first, mm-hmm. then write, or this, now you're yeah, picking here. Do. So everybody has their own different mm-hmm. approach to the process. But when you take this thing from just a creative idea to I'm going to produce this and put it out there into the marketplace and try to attempt to do commerce behind this or get distribution deals or things like that, then all those options start narrowing because Mm -hmm. there's 200 different ways to arrive to this point, but it's like it funnels in. You dig what I'm saying? Yes. Like, like, I write like this. You yeah. write like this. Yeah. I write like this. Sure. So that's three I different writing it. styles. And that's but if I've we're attempting learning. to sell that script, mm-hmm. now it's like there's pretty much only one or two ways to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you decide, oh, no, nah, I ain't finna do that. Like you get a person like, oh, you got to rap, you got to do a mixtape, this and that. Like certain times somebody say, no, nah, I ain't going to do it like that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it like this. Be like, well, there's a thousand ways to rap. Right. But there's only 10 guys getting money, and they kind of all did some variation of this. So mm-hmm. maybe, that, that maybe that's how shit. it should be done. Right. And some creative people don't want to buckle down and do it because, oh, I could go work for Google if I want to do corporate. They don't want to buckle mm-hmm. down. But if you're investing your time and energy with them with goals of going forward, mm-hmm. you're going to lose. Even though they don't have any malice, mm-hmm. you're going to lose yeah. dealing with it. And then there's some people who will be like, oh, you're a bright light. Oh, mm-hmm. you're a talent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me latch mm-hmm. on to you. I'm not going to put any actual effort into it. Right. So if you win, I'm going to win because I was there. Right. But if the you don't win. gets a ring when you win a championship. But if you right. don't win. Well, I didn't actually put in. You put all your emotional exactly. energy. I didn't put in energy. So you gotta look out Just for the energy face. vampires, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you gotta look out for the people who decide that they're smarter than the process, mm-hmm. or that they're gonna attack. They're gonna create a whole new. Bicycle. You gotta you right. gotta look out for those people unless you're just being creative for the sake of being creative. Mm-hmm. But right. if you have a goal to take your creativity and try to attempt to make money from it, there's certain s- steps yes. that most people sure. and you can everybody can tell about the time that lightning hit this person over here, mm-hmm. you know, but there's pretty much levels to this. Formulas, you know what I'm saying? Got, we can reform. We don't yeah. hold back shit. And some people will bullshit you and tell that you that like, words that like I love the band, like comedians who will tell you that this. <laughs> there's certain comedians that will tell you that oh, it's just got to be in you. Or there's certain people that act like that. I mean, it and has to you be in you. It can't be on you. But, that I'm true. Say, but what I'm saying though is that some of them will sometimes then you discover that. They were on the grind for nine years, or they put in this level of work mm-hmm. while they're trying to act exactly. like, oh, I just woke they up and just, did this. Yeah. Because they don't want to enable you. Exactly. They don't want to tell you the steps that they took. They want you to be like, wow, you just woke up and just did that? Right. Oh, wow, and, and, you must be some superior And, and human common being. society thinks that there's an overnight celebrity. There's no such thing as an no. overnight celebrity. So, I got something to say on that. Go Only for it. because, to. I used to promote with Nipsey when he first started coming. Mm-hmm. So I'm back in 2011, 2011 2012, 2013. in the house. Okay. Um, so I manage artists too. Mm-hmm. So I tell a lot of artists, you have to study the way mm-hmm. this man put his whole empire together. Because mm-hmm. I watched it from the Dude, ground up. Like, that was $100 CD. Literally, exactly. he didn't have, right. He was bullets have no name. Mixtapes and things like that. Mixtape. He didn't have All no that. clothing, no none of that. Mm-hmm. And once he started building his clothing, he started building his website. He started, you know. So I'm like, study him. Study how he did this. Watch him. It took him years. But as long as you There's have no the blueprint, you just got to hustle. The and, you gotta gotta be, be and you gotta and you gotta believe into it, and once you commit yourself to it, you gotta really go all in. For sure. And that's a lot of people, and that's why I say those energy vampires, because there's a lot of people who come and they want to collab with you, and they're saying all the right things, but mm-hmm. you have to ask hard questions. Okay, you seem like you got this plan. Why are you over here with me, and you're not over there? Like, what's happening? What's went wrong? This and that. Are you able to make an honest assessment? Am I going hard enough? Am I going smart enough? Am mm-hmm. I following the blueprint or am I allowing my ego to make me do other things because I got it all figured out even though I haven't cashed Nobody that level of check? So, you know, so, you know, you got a blueprint, planning, execution. 
those when I say there's certain steps that mm-hmm. you got to do, you can't leave this thing to chance. It got to be intentional. Or and you got to ask right what they say, the universe. You got to say, this is what I want. You already and know then my figure thing. out how to get there. Right. Like Not I just you, leave it to chance. When I was younger, <laughs> I told you, the thing is, and it's about discipline. What we'll go into, y'all. People that know me know discipline means discipline. Focus. Stick right. to it. Right. Discipline. Break down the word discipline. 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 Dis the plan. It was to the point to where I used to write shit, take a picture or something, put it over my bed mm-hmm. when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I didn't sleep in my bed till I got that shit. Exactly. That's discipline. Do you possess discipline? I mean, I'm not saying you got to go to that extreme. And I mean that in all all areas of everything, whether it was when I was younger or a certain person I wanted, a certain thing I wanted or whatever. If I but wanted you it. you got to go to a certain level of extreme. Yeah, you have to. I, met, I took a picture, drew a picture or whatever. I put the shit over my bed. And the reward was once I achieved what that was, I got to sleep in my bed. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by extreme is, is that... A lot of y'all ain't ready for that. Is that... A lot of y'all ain't built for that. If you want something extraordinary... Some people are meant to be... Then you, then you cannot put in you, ordinary you, yeah. effort. And that's what I mean by extreme. Like, you can't do your usual sure. and expect checks that you haven't usually been getting. Mm-hmm. You gotta put in... That's you gotta... Maybe there's... But I mean, it depends on your personality. Because yeah. what might be extreme to me... It's not extreme to him, but I do need to find my level of extreme and go there. And make it happen. Because some I hear people all the time telling me, oh, I want to make six figures off of this, this, and that. And Every then, like, I meet a, for some reason, I meet a lot of rappers, and they all want to go platinum. They I mean, you do manage that. niggas, so, but, I mean. But when you go to the studio, we're like, hey, we're at the studio. You go through there, and everybody's socializing. Or you have artists that you'll book them studio time photo shoots all this stuff and then they don't make it or you know no call no show or right, that's the worst shit professionalism is a motherfucker man you gotta be it's a it's so many levels i once lost the record shit. deal because the artist overslept for sound check and we, right, were, what's up, bro? and we were in we were in las vegas they put together a label it's, showcase it's, specifically for us the CEO of the label got indicted, and he sent his brother in his place to formalize everything, and the artist literally fell asleep high in the afternoon and slept through sound check. and I was standing there with some New York heavy hitters, you and them asking me, where your people at? Yeah, where your rappers at, man? Right. You got to get these high serious? after right. In fact, they had a party to go to a Caesar's Palace with Jay-Z, but his brother had commanded him to go there, meet, do this meet and greet, mm-hmm. and this and that. And in fact, that's why he showed up at Soundcheck, because he was like, man, fuck with my brother talking about, I'm going to be with Jay-Z tonight, so I'm not going to be right. here for the actual show, but I'm going to meet everybody at the Soundcheck. And that's put you like this, we flew to New York, and we played 30 songs for these, for these niggas, right? When I tell you not one, 20 people in the room, not one head nod through 30 songs. That's Niggas was 100% not feeling us. Mm-hmm. But my co-partner had a line with the CEO, and he was like, I'm going to throw you, throw y'all a deal and get a West Coast thing on the bone, even though none of his wow. people. But then he went to jail, and his people, who already wasn't fucking with us, was like, if you're going to get somebody from the West Coast, not these niggas. Right. And we literally went from going to Las Vegas to finalize this deal to driving back and home right. 11 hours 11. on the road with niggas talking about, well, I'm pretty sure the workout, I almost pulled over to Hatchapi. I almost pulled over to Hatchapi and hurt niggas. You got to... You gotta... You gotta, you gotta work on your craft. I had already For spent, sure. I had already spent focus. the five hundred thousand dollar advance in my head. <laughs> I had already spent, spent it. I had already spent the money. So when the money didn't actually come, you talk about depressed. <laughs> Took me damn near a month to get out of bed because niggas got high the night Chicken, before and today, linked up. Niggas linked tomorrow. up with some groupies, my dad told got me high that. and loaded, and couldn't make it to the meeting. And all I could think about was. 
if you'd have made this meeting, you would have had all the groupies you ever dreamed of. Groupies is everywhere. She messing up. But you understand? now just think, groupies if you, if you a broke dude who's work who's working, and you get an opportunity where you could at least be a hundred thousand air, and you blow that, that partying, mm-hmm. you 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 should be ashamed of yourself. Right. Yeah. 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 But, less than is but like I said, you gotta do their ordinary That's get right. down was to go to the clubs and pull chicks. They had a little knack for that. Yeah. That was their ordinary get down. That's why I say we this one time I needed the them to do something extraordinary. Mm-hmm. I needed them one time to be like, I'm oh, not baby, I'm cool, I got Focus. business. One time <laughs> and they couldn't do it and same, it blew our deal. That same Pooh Nani was gonna be there after. No, better. What's gonna right. be there? Well, I'm I say, I'm not necessarily you already know I know the saying. story. I no, already know. No, it's just, Something I know. more better. At least the ones that shoot the dart like, across the right. room and bust the balloons. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, a, be, a, a, better, a better, a they better, a better be Indian, not only. I if know. they could have took one day, one Saturday, and said, "We're not gonna party. We're gonna lock in," a whole better life was on the other side of that of that day. Yeah, you gotta have it. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, because I was finna go there, but I'm not. So. <laughs> there was uh, not a day we were shooting town biz that I didn't feel like socking blood. I already know. <laughs> I already know. Just, yeah. I, even, I already know. Because I didn't put it on blast. I, that know, I wasn't fucking with no, no you, more. You Somebody do else incorporated me to another project. Mm-hmm. So then I had to this, work with dudes. And you even on a said daily that. Basis. So now people going to probably go back and watch Town Biz. Yeah, matter of fact, y'all go back and watch It was Town 40 Biz. of us in Town Biz. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. nobody figured out who I'm talking about. Don't do but that. But you, you know what's I right. already know, but it's good. It's, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? The universe probably didn't but, think you was prepared to have that. So it used that person. Remember I said that to, last week. You know what I mean? said I'm that last week. I said, the, as reckless as I was then, you if ready. I would have got a hold of that bread, my self-destructive tendencies would have right. probably version to the point where I wouldn't and be sitting here And you wouldn't probably right be now. the co-host of this greatest Yeah, the greatest probably been in federal ever. prison. But... If that artist is watching and you get pissed off, like this is one thing books. I can say. Maybe your lane might be to make YouTube videos and write books as a cautionary tale of other people on the verge Should of we have success. Him on the, never mind, I ain't gonna do other that. people on nah, the verge of success do of to lock in. Don't get this far in the journey and blow it. Because until the bag is actually in your hands, you can still blow it. Can blow it like what's this basketball player that just beat up his uh, old mm-hmm. lady? And they said oh. he was about to sign a hundred and twenty million dollars. Hey, hey, that's deal. real. Let me say something real, real quick. I'm just say this. Y'all know, me. men, fellas, brothers, uh, dudes that was born with a stick and two balls. Uh, stop hitting on women. Yeah, don't do that. It's not yours. It's your turn. I seen somebody in because the I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say something. No, on no, listen, so, listen. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a, we going we going to get ready to end but I just want something I just was I wasn't going to talk about it tonight but I will for the sake of what you brought up. I just seen a post because you know people hit me with, "Bro, you see this shit? There was a cruise carnival in New York, a 60 person brawl behind somebody threesome." Yes. That I saw I saw the video. The video on Twitter. Yeah, I saw the video. They are brawling on that thing. Over somebody's threesome. Listen, if your <laughs> if your woman and I'm never I'm not gonna disrespect a woman. I love the woman. The melanated woman is God. I love women so much I burn other people's. No, I don't. This is my former life. I'm married, but I'm just saying. You would have caught me one back then, you probably was yeah, you already know. But listen. Fellas, fellas, please, 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 I implore you with the almightiest of intelligence I'm trying to bestow upon you. Not us, Robo. It's just your turn. Enjoy the ride. But let's when it ain't your turn, too. Uh-uh. you can't go have a threesome turn, with somebody else's wife as your Enjoy it and keep it in the tuck. Like, Oh, y'all went did that? Well, cool. Right. You don't know shit. Everybody should have secrets. Nothing wrong with secrets. I'm just saying. That shit, now all y'all probably banned from Carnival for life because <laughs> y'all was trying to go kick it and, and somebody was loose with the goose, lost in the sauce, and let her nature, and I'm not going to blame it on the woman, and I'm not. 
Because it could have been the dude that was like, boom, boom. He just had the conversation run the nation. You know what I'm saying? The procrastination is a violation. Y'all already know that. I'm just saying. Y'all just ruined y'all travel experience probably. Behind three people, according to the reports. Of a threesome. So what? Man, he, man, his chick shouldn't have did. If that was his woman, she wouldn't have did nothing. I can understand that. If that, that was, ego hold on. If that was her dude, he wouldn't have did nothing. I'm gonna hold him. I'm gonna hold both sides, all parties accountable. Just get, just to be lower, lower vernacular <laughs> sense with this shit. Y'all gotta stop with this bullshit. Cause it's a difference between cheating and poly. Okay. Uh, oh, do you see the? We'll talk after. I did <laughs> yeah. a post, and it, do, yeah. them dudes that do the gas station post with the thirsty chicks trying to do the shit uh, he tried yeah. to do one. I posted it, and it was a chick like I'm Polly. Her dude was like, "Oh man, you got to feed her," and he rolled off and left her sitting there talk. This nigga fumbled the bag. I was like, see, this is what's wrong with you niggas. You motherfuckers don't know what y'all be doing, but y'all swear y'all about that life. About this. Last time, went, sister, you, you last time I went. Last time I went on the cruise, said. I stopped somebody at the bar from yep. going to do that. They were a couple had basically seduced her. Anthony, we are not striking I women. This fool said if you I strike her, strike the, the thigh, it bruises a lot do. less. No, we do like, not condone. Violence and against women. I would. Like, I, we would. Like, no. No. I know you're don't, joking, but don't, no. Don't, don't do it. We don't. Mm-hmm. We don't you condone don't violence said, against women. I told you, don't do it at all, any way, shape, said, or form. Don't, I said, don't do it. If you can't tell him, but I implore that, y'all, dudes. I'm gonna go get, get, a, grip on, right. get a grip on. Get a grip in life. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. Get a grip in life. We don't. She was like, I don't think we don't. We don't. I'm having an experience. Like, no, don't do it. Pardon me. We don't violate women in no way, shape, or form. So Remember, like I said, you can't stand on it. God. You come from a woman. Oh, I'm going to go do this. You don't spend nine it. months right. in if there, and you spend the rest of your life trying to get back in there. Please stop uh, abusing women and respect the women. And you uh, R. Kelly's out there in the world. I hope somebody uh, pour acid brothers. on your balls. That's all I'm saying. I hope y'all have a safe 4th of July weekend. <laughs> Uh, have a say first of July. Be it's safe first Fridays. The, hey, Friday. Fab got the hyphy party tonight in the town. Jumping off is first Friday. It's a lot of shit going down. Hopefully, wherever you are, tuning in because we ain't just local. I know I got viewers all over. I be people who watching from where. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and I'm giving everybody the opportunity to tell you where they can find them at. And we'll start with my beautiful sister Queen. Tell them where you can find you. You can find me on just Instagram right now, Stony Marley, Stony with an I E, not an E Y, Marley, like by Marley, on Instagram, and my whole link tree is connected in my bio. Boom. Everything else is too. All my different pages. And you can find me at Feral Films across the board, and uh, you know, hey, if y'all trying to collab, I'm down, but no, you gotta come correct. Um, you can find me in your chick's dreams when you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. I'm the nigga she thinking about. No, nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> nah, you know me. You can find me, Kanyak underscore confessionals on Instagram. Uh, Facebook, if you know me, then you can follow me. If you don't know me personally, <laughs> follow my Instagram. Uh, thank you for tuning in as always. Peace, love, and light as always. Uh, please be safe this weekend because remember... Courts is closed Monday, so if you go to jail today, tomorrow, mm-hmm. or Sunday, you're not going to court till Tuesday, mm-hmm. maybe Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So please be safe. Don't do no dumb shit and fuck pedophiles. And oh, also, I'm gonna give y'all a quick ibit. They trying some CERN shit this weekend too on the fifth. No, it's Tuesday. Y'all better be mindful of the shit you're doing. Stop buying uh, fake meat. Uh, <laughs> All that. If, 3D printed meat or whatever. All that. Uh, Not the 3D printed meat. All that. Uh, it's a lot of shit going on in the world, y'all. And I hope y'all really pay attention to what's going on and stop being distracted. For sure. Because that versus shit that happened was a distraction. The other shit that, yeah, it was a distraction. Man, I would think Even that R. Kelly shit is a distraction. Would do sound a little better than that. Oh, yeah. Them verses, yeah. We didn't get into that last week. We ain't going to get into it tonight because we finna roll. But well, all I'm saying Mario. is. Mario handled his business. A salute to that man. 
Hey, and y'all hey. also look up Mario's story in his documentary. For it's, sure. That is really an inspiring cat. Because he got blackballed. All right. Yeah. Shout out to shout out to the real singers of the world. Y'all stop uh, giving these people who don't deserve clout clout. And I ain't, I'm not not including anybody. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> what y'all gonna do? Come talk to me. We can have a conversation. Meet me outside. But, yeah. How about that? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, y'all for real though. Be safe. Uh, hug your kids. Hug. All right, teach your little one something. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Unless they kids that don't deserve a hug. Akili and me, if you got toddlers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day. They teach Swahili, Yoruba, Spanish, English. Right, and at the end of the day, the day is over. So, I got two toddlers right there. Yeah, he got his. Yeah, right. Hey, Pharaoh brought. Yeah, he Ubungo got. Kids, and we was Pharaoh. talking, and they, they got some gyms tonight. But anyway, Trust you know me. what I'm saying? In one ear. Out yeah. the other. <laughs> now it's time to say goodbye to Whoa. all my Negro friends. <laughs> hey, we'll catch y'all next week with White Out. Peace. Peace.